right. Welcome back to the Built to Grow podcast. I'm your host, Tim Lyons, back in the studio, joined today by Randy Yankston. What's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me tell you, uh, those those intros are... Uh, <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> it's one of those things that, uh, you know, 99% of these episodes you've done, and last week I was... That's it right. Took a cu- took a couple to get them off the you know uh, to get the, the words flowing. It was. What did you say? I have to go listen to it. The, well, we uh, we restarted the one because everything from you know joining uh, <laughs> Zach joining from Pulse Fitness, which is not true anymore. Uh, yeah, just butchered butchered my way through the first couple, but uh, yeah, because I was out of town and yeah, um, yeah that's right. So all, <laughs> all good. Uh, well, we're back in the normal uh, setup here with the i'm on this side were you on this side yeah, i was <laughs> <laughs> should have just stayed over there that's what probably messed you up <laughs> throws it, everything it off. doesn't really matter what side you're on, mm. on so just keep it keep it interesting all good so so guys this topic today what we're talking about coaching up versus uh back filling down essentially is is really i think the the biggest secret to key and key to unlocking the gym owner's freedom of mm-hmm. removing themselves from the operation so you know, in a standard situation, the gym owner is is the alpha type. They'll just get it done mentality. It doesn't matter if it's a going to fix a toilet or or backfilling for a coach or making a sales call or running to the store to grab supplies. The gym owners are just one of the hard. I mean, just the hardest working people. They just do get the job done. Yeah. While that's commendable, at the same time, you've changed yourself to your operations, and you know, very unlikely to ever find yourself being able to leave without the gym falling apart behind you. And that's, you know, essentially what a self-employed gym owner is versus a business owner, gym owner, right? Correct. Correct. Uh, by our friend Kiyosaki, who, um, side note, I'm trying to get him to speak with our iron circle. Hell so yeah. that's, that's kind of what I'm working on right now. But um, point is this, we figured out something here, or I figured out something here years ago that's allowed me to move on right like because if i if i didn't do this i'd be in there um selling memberships right now if i'm being honest right like i i used to do that for years in the beginning didn't have anybody yeah but in our facility what we do is we coach up so we give the coaches an opportunity to back well up up fill to uh the role above them there you go yeah versus the owner or the director back filling down so In our model, we have the coaching staff, we have the fitness director, and then we have the owner, right? And so there's like three levels. Mm -hmm. There's things the director has to do that maybe Zach's out of town. He's he's out of town for something or he's sick or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. There's all these, he had a baby, he was gone for a week, like all these things, right? So versus, you know, having me come back in isn't the best use of my time. So what we do is we, we, pick our coaches and we train them up on sales or contracts or um, updating things in the, in the database or whatever. So while Zach's gone, that's getting handled by the coaches up. Yep. So it does a couple of things. Not only does it keep you, the owner, the gym owner from having to go back, fill or go jump back into the gym, into the day-to-day operations, especially when you've removed yourself, you probably don't even know what you're doing in there. <laughs> like, I don't know what I'm doing in here anymore. Not anymore. Uh, and it also gives the coach a little bit of a, a path right it gives them a a, something to shoot towards and so do you have to pay them extra i guess that's probably the next logical no you do not have to pay a coach extra to backfill up for for a week or something there's nothing needed on that level but eventually zach's going to need to replace himself Mm -hmm. if he ever wants to move out of that role so we're kind of identifying coaches that make that make sense and anyway, so the point is this, right? Gym owners, you're always backfilling for everybody. You're always going, oh, I got to cover for a coach. I got to train that, that 10 a.m. session. Uh, I've got to go back and do sales. I got to go run and do this versus, hey, coaches handle that. And the coaches backfill for each other. For the coaches that are out of town, um, we, we put it on them. Yep. Like they, they can't get the week off or the day off unless it's covered. And they need to cover it themselves between coaches. And that works out really well. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I mean, it's insulation, right? I mean, what we're, what you're doing is in one situation, if the gym owner, if you're not building this into your gym, if this doesn't become the norm, if you don't kind of create this, Mm -hmm. it's always going to be the other way, right? The gym owner is going to be the one that's responsible to step in and do it all um, in anybody's absence type of thing. And I think you said it, like, do you have to pay them more? No. And the reason being is if this is an understanding, this is part of their job, as they're as they're coming on board, I mean, this isn't a shock. This isn't something that like, you know, we're throwing new work on their plate that they're unaware 
you know, at some point that they might need to do. Mm-hmm. It's all clear and transparent from the beginning. But that's, again, it's it's with intention. It's not just, you know, throwing them. Hey, throwing can them you cover for me this yeah, week? No, it's built in. We train them up. And, and that's the key to this whole thing. It's yep. like it's, it's part of the role. Like, hey, there's going to be times where we're going to need you to step in and do some sales. We don't expect them to do sales all the time. But we do that because... I don't have to, like, so I don't have to, right? And, and that's the point. you know, and at the end of the day, I mean, there's there's dual benefit too. You know what I mean? You you going back in and doing the, that doesn't make them any better of, right. of in the position that they're in, but they're getting reps on that next step up. They're yeah. getting, you know, you're building skill sets into their normal operations so that they are a little bit more capable, that they do have a little bit of a path or opportunity to move forward, mm-hmm. which can be hard. I mean, obviously, like you, you went through the, the structure. There's not a lot of positions in the gym that, you no. know, to, for opportunity, but you'd much rather bring somebody up and allow them to ascend as opposed to pulling, pulling somebody back in. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know I mean? Absolutely. And, you know, Zach will go back down to the training floor when, mm-hmm. when needed. And there's, and there's something good about that as well, because by him removing himself, never being out there on a training floor, he kind of loses the pulse sure. of, of, yeah. the, of what's going on out there. So I know it's right down the hall. I can go pop his head in the gym if he wanted to. But having him and talking to the clients and working one on it, it's a good thing. So And there's probably a level of communication that, like, you know, the, the clients might say something to Zach that they wouldn't say to a coach. Sure. Or, you know what I mean? So, so you, it's a good uh, – I agree. I think that it gives a good – baseline he gets a better understanding for the what's happening in those four walls yeah. as opposed to just being you know locked up in his office the whole time and there's one thing that kind of goes through my mind a lot like listen you know zach if zach disappeared one day because he doesn't want to be here anymore i'm i'm kind of screwed sure <laughs> kind of screwed because i'd have to come back in and, and and try to figure all this stuff out right i don't expect that to happen but something could happen right like whatever right so by coaching the coaches up, that's also part of this deal. So I'm not, I'm double insulated. There's redundancy across the same, you know, the same job descriptions and things like that. The job roles. The org chart. And, and, you know, it's funny because um, a friend of ours, Stu, Stu Brower had, had a, like a rant going on. Like, do you think you're ever a hundred percent really ever hands off passive gym owner? If you, if you only have one location and you've got one guy, like if you lose that guy, you're back in. And I've always known that I always felt that. And he's right because mm-hmm. th- it's either you or them. But in this situation, what we're talking about here is you've got these, the coaches up leveling their skill sets to sales, doing consultations, doing check-ins, doing in-bodies, doing, you know, nutrition, uh, being able to get into the CRM and update, you know, client records, et cetera. They can do all of those things. So there would be, there would be some backfill or upfill. We call it upfill, sure. but yeah, some upfill happening. It wouldn't be all just me. Now, on top of that, we've got SOPs out the yin yang. Now we've got pretty much documented uh, systems for everything in this facility. So it would not be hard to either bring a coach up or bring a new coach in uh, a new director in to, to take that role. So, uh, you know, at some level it's like, yeah, it, there's some risk there, but I also feel pretty good. Like, Hey, it wouldn't be, it'd be a week or two well, before we'd figure you it out. You nailed it. it you risk is the, th- it's risk mitigation. You know yeah. what I mean? You're building in some systems that in the event, something does happen. Here is how we go and we operate that way. It doesn't yeah. just fall to you as the owner. You're just not throwing your, you know, stuck in a situation where it's, yeah all right, I'm back in the weeds. You've got some support from the team. They know that hey, that's the direction that they would be going in, in any of those events. So you, you do, it's, it's, a, it's like a shared burden, in, you know, in the meantime, and you can then continue to coach them up and find yourself back out of that role. Right. right. So, but yeah, if you don't build those, if you don't start that stuff now, if you don't create these systems, if you're not intentional about where, who's doing the work when so-and-so isn't in the office, that's going to be you then. Yep. And if you're not, again, if you don't make those things very clear, part of the, the normal day-to-day operations of the business, you, you can expect to be pulled back down. Yeah. Back and, and there's one thing that you can just look at it this way. Somebody's got to do the job. Exactly. So it's not like you're doing anything wrong by not having this, it, it, by not training your coaches up and you're, say you're an owner, you've got a director in place and you're kind of stepped out a little bit. By not having it built, you're not necessarily doing anything wrong. You just know that you're at risk yeah. to having to step back in. Somebody's got to do it. Somebody, there's no automation that you can do to make sales. I mean, we're, we're looking into it, but it, <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't there yet. Yeah. 
Uh, there's just, there's some, there's a human being that needs to be in that role. And as, as much as you'd love to say, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, completely out and everything's fine. No, somebody's going to do it. So here's, here's your chance. Oh my gosh, I didn't think about that. Now I can, now you can go fix it. Yep. Go create that, start looking at your coaches. Who's my all-stars? Who can I bring up into that role? Because if it ain't the coach, it's you. Yeah. And let's, let's not make that mistake when you already know the answer right now. So hopefully that helps you guys. That was a quick episode. Just want to get, throw that out there. Uh, one of the chapters in the book, we were just skimming through. I was like, yep, this is something that we should talk about. And we do, I don't think we've talked about this much on, on this episode. No. On all 597 <laughs> episodes. How, how to give yourself that level of insulation. Yeah, yeah, 10 4. All right, that's it for this episode, guys. Until next time, keep changing lives. We'll see you on the next one. Bye. All right. And thank you for listening to that episode of the Built to Grow podcast, where we help gym owners win. Now, do you want to connect with me and other gym owners online? All you need to do is join our private Facebook group, Business Talk with Fitness Professionals. Just head on over to Facebook and type in Business Talk with Fitness Professionals. And when you do, we're going to give you our 10 marketing strategies seven-figure gym owners use to win. I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Until then, keep building something great.